are at the best restaurant in Bolivia, Pinchby. I'm so excited to be here. Today we are taking a small hiatus from Bogota and heading to La Paz, Bolivia. This is the furthest south either of us have been. And we don't really know what to expect. We've heard like good and bad things about the customs and immigration office when we arrive, but I think we're prepared. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. Alright, so we're hanging out at the Latam Lounge and this is the first one that we've actually enjoyed. We have not had good luck in Colombia with lounges. They've been pretty like I didn't get to see you dance the walls. It's about 1 a.m. I think I'm a little early. Now we just gotta run the gauntlet through immigration. In Bolivia, if you if if you're from the US, you need to have a visa, so um, before you get here, but they will let you do a border visa. But you're gonna hear like all kinds of crazy stuff like, you know, you gotta, you gotta have like crisp bills and you know, double copies of everything and that, that is true. But you actually can use a credit card at the La Paz airport. So keep that in mind. Okay, we made it to our hotel room. It's about three in the morning or so. Um, it's been a long day. So I think we're just gonna call it a night here. Um, see you in the morning, go check out some La Paz. We found a gem of a hotel. It's in a neighborhood called Calicoto. It's in the southern part of town called Zona Sur. It's a safer part of town and a walking neighborhood for exploring. The Atex Hotel is a design hotel shaped as a parallelogram with floor to ceiling windows and is made entirely of Bolivian materials and filled with local art. It had an incredible rooftop terrace with a pool and a bar and views of the city. Okay, so when we were looking up at restaurants to visit while we were in the Paz, actually this one came up as one of the top ones. We're just lucky enough to be staying in the same hotel. So while most hotel restaurants are not that great, this one's actually a destination. Everything from the construction of this building to every ingredient that is on the menu is Bolivian. So we didn't even realize that Bolivian wines were much of a thing. We're having our very first one. It's a Tanit grape. Never had that either, although those are from all over the world. France even has them. Um, look how dark this wine is. It's delicious. It's like dark, dark berry, heavy tannins, real fruity. It's amazing. Okay, so what I think is one of the most unique things in La Paz, well, around transportation, is the teleferico system that they've got. So it's kind of like a metro system, but there's no way with so many mountains and congestion that they can't really do anything for public transportation. So about five years ago, they actually just started, you know, building these cable card systems to like join up like all the parts of the city. So now there's like, it's like nine lines open and even though we're staying in the south of town um, it's still connected you know to the teleferico system so today we're gonna go check it out we're gonna go ride the, the cable cars then totally. i think it's gonna be fun it's gonna be like an on and off bus from the air from the air Bolivian adventure in La Paz to acclimate a little bit more to the altitude in preparation for a visit to the salt flats. La Paz is the highest capital in the world and also has the highest international airport. 
It's in a bowl-like canyon surrounded by the Andes Mountains, which at the lowest is 10,650 feet and at the highest around 13,250 feet. It's a big city of over 11 million people and about 70% of them live downtown. And there are 36 indigenous languages spoken here. So many articles we read about visiting the city said things like, you're going to love and hate La Paz. It's exhilarating and frustrating. We really weren't sure what we were going to find. I think this is a pretty rad. I don't know where we're going. <laughs> but... I think there's like five lines that we can take that takes us to the top of one of the mountains. So... You should say that in front of the camera. So there's like five lines that we're going to take that should get us to the top of the mountain. So far, so good. It is exactly like riding a metro. You just go from station to station, you hop off, doors open, you walk down to the next uh, line, you jump on. You do have to pay, we, we got a card. That's what she's trying to find right now is the card. Watch out, card. Oh, I've, I've got the card. <laughs> I got the guard. So anyway, so yeah, you take the guard and you just like, you know, you just tap it each time you go into a new line and then you kind of recharge it every now and then. But yeah, this is easy and it's actually pretty fun. Pretty fun. All right, we made it to the top of the red line which is El Alto, which is this, is, this is where you come to get the good view. And it's, it's, it is actually pretty awesome. Done with the teleferico. A few hours in total, I think. I had no idea how big La Paz is. It's enormous. It was really cool though. We took like six of the lines or something like that, like almost from one end of the city to the other. So it's incredible. takes about an hour and a half to get from one end of the city to the other. Alright, we're gonna do a quick change. We're gonna go to dinner. going on in Bolivia for many reasons and without giving you too much of a book report I'll tell you it's partly because of the previous president who was the first indigenous Aymara president Mr. Morales he was doing a lot of work to support farmers and agricultural business and partly because Klaus Meyer one of the geniuses behind Noma in Copenhagen he had a vision and using his words he wanted to fight poverty through deliciousness he planned to have a Bolivian equivalent to Noma in La Paz. He put chef Camilla Siedler in charge of opening Gusto and developing the experimental menu. At first, she was thrown into the deep end, finding ingredients, navigating the local market, and seeking unique purveyors to work with. She has flourished by having a food laboratory to catalog indigenous foods and is now a role model to so many young chefs changing the face of Bolivian dining. She also worked to open a culinary school named Monk A, to help the youth in La Paz's more economically poor areas. Gusto's first Bolivian employee had a lot to do with the success of the program. The schools help prepare students to work in restaurants. They teach food safety, which is truly needed in Bolivia, and the art of service. There is a sensation. 
They aren't trying to be more popular than the other restaurants in the neighborhood. They're running a race all by themselves, and it's an entirely new game. Hey, if you're having fun watching our videos, we'd love it if you hit the subscribe button. Also, if you click on that bell, you'll get a notification as soon as we have a new video posted, and we've got a lot more coming your way.